Microsoft Teams is getting a big change to its calendar. I know what you may be thinking, Scott is seriously running out of ideas focusing on the video on a calendar in Teams. But what if I told you that new calendar is a change that we've been waiting years for? The ability to have the new Outlook experience of calendars built inside of Teams, giving you a new way to organize meetings. Find out who's in the office before you arrive and find everyone's working remotely. Schedule an in-person event with your peers when you know they're going to be in the office using the help of the new scheduling assistant. And even more great capability like viewing shared calendars inside of Teams. So if that interests you, you're going to love this brand new tutorial. And before we dive in, if you want to find great new ways to work with Microsoft 365, why not download a Microsoft 365 ebook link below showing you great tools that you may be missing out on to improve your use of Microsoft 365. So otherwise, let's dive into Microsoft Teams and show you how to work with this new calendar experience. So you join me in Microsoft Teams. And we're going to get started by working with your new calendar. But as you can see, my calendar hasn't yet changed, but we can absolutely upgrade your new calendar. When you've opened your Teams calendar, in the right hand side you'll see a new option, which will be the new calendar slider. By checking this box here, you'll be taken straight into the new experience in your new Microsoft Teams calendar, now powered by Microsoft Outlook. Because yes, this new calendar has new capabilities, and visibly we can already see some differences. For example, once we look at the calendar here, if I open one of my existing events in my calendar, you'll see visibly it looks more like Microsoft Outlook. We see the Outlook ribbon bar, which is now available in the new Outlook and Outlook on the web. And we even see additional meeting insights that potentially have content or other emails relevant to the meeting I'm gonna have with Alex. In addition to that, by scheduling a new event on the calendar is as simple as we've done that in Outlook. By selecting new event, or by creating an event straight on your calendar, you'll see the new meeting experience, once again powered by new Outlook and Outlook on the web. This experience here now allows us to use additional components in our invitations. We can use modern attachments from OneDrive and other locations, and we can even add loop components. By selecting the option here, we can go ahead and add a loop component into our meeting invite. And just like we did before in Microsoft Teams and Outlook, at the bottom, we have an option to add an agenda, which now adds a Microsoft Loop meeting notes section inside of our meeting invite that we can now collaborate with our internal peers. But I know what you may be thinking. Well, none of this looks particularly groundbreaking in this new calendar. Now, absolutely, this new experience is much better, but there's some new capability in here, which I'm sure also you'll find helpful. The first capability in your new Teams calendar is the ability to look at shared calendars, which we couldn't do in our Teams calendar before. On the left hand side, we see my calendars, which also includes Alex's calendar as well. He's one of my colleagues I work with within the company. And now I can see my colleagues availability inside of my Microsoft Teams calendar. In addition to that, we also have the ability to review group calendars. For example, if you have a Microsoft team with a shared calendar, you can easily select one of these groups here to visibly see it once again inside of your Microsoft Teams calendar, now giving you the ability to look at these shared calendars. But there is a consideration. When you're working with this new calendar experience, you would think you could simply select the free dot menu and then add a shared calendar. And that is not the case as yet in the new calendar experience in Teams. So how do we add shared calendars then? Well, we can do that using Outlook on the web or the new version of Outlook. Now, if I head over into the new Outlook, you'll see inside of the calendar icon that we can select Add Calendar. And by left clicking it, we can now select Add from Directory and also in the drop down, select your work account. And now simply type in the person you'd like to add into your shared calendars and simply add it into My Calendars as shown here and select Add. That will now immediately make this calendar available inside of your Microsoft Outlook on the web, or alternatively, in Outlook for your desktop. And in Microsoft Teams, this change will also be shown. It can take about 10 minutes, and a restart of Teams sometimes is required, but just like we can see Alex's calendar, we'll also see Nestor's calendar very shortly in your new Teams calendar, allowing you to add shared calendars from your colleagues, 
and then see them inside of Teams. But in the new world, we often work from home or different locations and organizing meetings can be tricky. And inside of the new Outlook and now in the Teams calendar, we can make that a lot easier. In fact, let's go into a freed up menu at the top of our calendar and select calendar settings. And in here, all we then need to do is go down and select work hours and location. You can now specify the working hours where you are available for your meetings. But importantly, you can also set locations, whether you're going to be in the office or you're going to be working remotely. As an example, I'll note that from Monday to Wednesday I work in the office, but Thursday and Friday I work remotely. That will also now be available to my colleagues when they also organise meetings, and I'll also be able to see who else is in the office on given days. We'll be able to see that by now clicking on Save, and inside of my Teams calendar, what I can now do by closing this dialogue is I can see visibly the days I'm working in the office denoted by an office icon. By selecting the office icon, I'll also see other people who are working in the office on that day. Alex in my team is also in the office, and that is shown because Alex has also updated his Teams calendar or Outlook calendar to show his working locations. That now means before you head into the office to meet with your team and find out nobody's there, you'll easily be able to see it for your Teams calendar and then work out the right days to catch up with your team. But also we can go a step further. If we head into a new event here, what I'd like to do is arrange a catch up with Alex. So I'll go ahead and add in to our meeting invitation. And with that done, let's also consider when Alex is working in the office because what I could easily do here is go and select find a time and scheduling assistant will show me all the locations that me and Alex could catch up with based on our calendar availability but I like to catch up with Alex in person for our one-to-ones. So let's instead check the in-person event. And now you see new available time slots, but why is that? We just saw Monday on the screen, but now it shows Tuesday. And by left clicking on here, you'll see it shows that both me and Alex are in the office on that day. So by checking in-person event, shows you the availability of the other party, assuming of course you updated their Outlook or Teams calendar. Now ensuring that when you arrive for your meeting in person, you'll also find the other person working in the office. So let's go ahead and send this across. But you might think this is useful, but on odd days, you may not be in the office. But you can update that through your Teams calendar. By left clicking on one of your days, you can simply click in a drop down and select working remotely. That won't now change your working hours for every single week, because you'll see that under your calendar settings but rather it just changes it for that particular day that you've set it as. If you need to work remotely, you can update your calendar in advance and set the relevant days that you're in the office. And what else can your new calendar provide? Well, you can now be able to filter through all of your different meeting invites, be it meetings, appointments, or categories, or even show in-person events as well. You'll be able to now do that for your new Teams calendar. In addition, we can now view in different ways. We can see a day view, a work week, a week or a month. And we can even customize those time scales. I actually see it 60 minutes rather than 30 minute intervals. And these changes are all available directly through the new calendar experience in Teams. And there's more options too. Under the freed up menu, you may want to print your calendar to get a view of your upcoming week. You can even print a detailed agenda which you now go ahead and print off that potentially you could take on the road with you, showing meeting IDs and passcodes to join meetings. And you can even change that to look at the working week, day or month, meaning that you can now take an export and an easier print of your working week, be able to share it with others really easily. And also in your calendar settings under your freed up menu, you can also change additional capabilities to personalize your calendar. That could be different time zones you want to also work with in, as well as the central time zone that you work with. And if you want to get a view of the weather before you head into the office, you can also go into the weather options and set a location from where also you're working from. So I'd like to get up to speed what the weather is at the moment in London. And now by saving that change inside of your team's calendar, you'll easily see that next to the office location and get an idea of the weather at that given area. Make sure you can take an umbrella or a coat before you leave for the office. So you can see this new Teams calendar can now provide much more capabilities than we've ever seen before in the calendar inside of Teams. And you can easily turn it on by choosing the slider on the right. 
If you're not happy, you want to leave this new experience and go back to the old Teams calendar, just go ahead, select the box, and you can provide feedback to Microsoft about why you didn't feel the calendar was working well for you. But if you go ahead and skip this feedback, you'll see you'll be taken back to the old calendar and once again can turn it on on the right hand side. We've now been given a new calendar that can work so much better than the calendar we've had for so many years. So what do you think about these new changes in the Microsoft Teams calendar? Personally, I very rarely use the Microsoft Teams calendar before. I had to go back to Outlook to organize meetings and schedule meetings with my colleagues or review shared calendars. The Teams calendar just never provided any of that capability. But over the last couple of weeks using this new calendar, I found about to do all of that inside of Teams, meaning I don't have to fire up Outlook to begin to schedule or join meetings. And so that is the biggest benefit. It's a massive time drain when you're opening multiple apps just to go and schedule meetings or simply join them. So I'm sure this new experience will also help you. If you like this video, I'd love for you to hit that like button, hit the all important subscribe button to find more great content like this every single week. And otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.